Hey guys, happy Wednesday. Hope everybody is doing well out there today. Uh, today we're gonna continue our Raspberry Pi uh, Open Media Vault series that we started uh, earlier this week. So in our last video, we talked about the hardware that we're gonna use in this setup. And I actually already had a video explaining how to install Open Media Vault on a Raspberry Pi. So we're kind of up to that point where we can start looking at doing things like installing Docker, installing Portainer, doing some additional configurations on the Raspberry Pi itself. So that's what our goal for today is gonna be is just some uh, configuration on the Pi, as well as installing Docker and Portainer. So if you haven't installed Open Media Vault yet, I do have a video where I show how to do that, as well as a blog post to go with it. Really, you've got to run like four commands in an SSH, and it's up and running. So very, very simple process, uh, but we want to kind of expand on that a little bit uh, to make sure that things are set up properly from the beginning. So let's go ahead and jump over to my desktop and take a look at the next steps. Okay, so here we are on my desktop, and uh, here we're looking at Open Media Vault installed on uh, our Raspberry Pi. Now there's some initial stuff that we wanna take a look at first. Uh, the first thing I always like to do is come into here and change this from port 80 to port 81, uh, just because we're going to end up installing uh, Nginx Proxy Manager on there, and Nginx Proxy Manager is going to require that we use port 80. So I like to change this one to 81. Really, you can change it to just about anything. Uh, just know that you don't wanna to try to use a port that's already in use or will be in use by something else. 81's pretty safe. Uh, below that, this auto logout, I've already changed this. Uh, by default, this is set to five minutes. Uh, this isn't very long and we're gonna spend some time in here. So I like to keep this disabled. So we'll go ahead and click on save. And then over here on a, a web administrator password, uh, by default, this is open media vault. Um, I don't like to type that. So I put in my own password here. I uh, just repeat that uh, for both of those, click save, then come up here and click apply and yes. And then that will take a minute to do its thing and then it'll probably give an error. Uh, so we'll need to just go over here to port 81 and uh, see if we can't get logged in there just like that. Uh, so now we're logged in, everything there is good to go. There's that error message I was talking about. So we'll go ahead and close there and say, okay. Uh, now the next thing we wanna do is come over here to date and time. Uh, make sure that your time zone is correct. Uh, this will actually play a role in certificates and things like that, SSLs, things like that, especially. Uh, you wanna make sure that your time is set up correctly. Um, and then basically all you've got to do, set your time zone, uh, click save, and uh, then you don't need to click uh, the apply that would show up here just yet, because we're gonna go do a few other things first. So what we'll do over here is we'll go to network, uh, the host name, so you can basically change your host name to whatever you want. Uh, I'm actually gonna name mine Hal, um, and hal.local uh, for the domain name. Uh, the reason for that is because I shared this uh, setup over on Reddit uh, with the with a picture of everything. And a couple of people mentioned Hal from 2001, A Space Odyssey. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, that's what I'm gonna name mine. I'm gonna name mine Hal, and then I'm gonna click save. And then I'm gonna come over here to interfaces and I'm gonna open up ethernet zero here, eth zero. And I'm gonna go ahead and change this from DHCP to static. And what I'm gonna do is type in my IP address. Uh, this is what my, my network gave me. So that's what I'm gonna stick to. It just keeps things from changing in the future. So I'm gonna type that in at uh, 192.168.68.126. Uh, and of course, yours will probably be different than that. Uh, so go ahead and just change your, put in your IP address here. Uh, your net mask is probably going to be 255.255. .255. Uh, 255.0, that's pretty standard. And your gateway will be whatever your router's IP address is. In my case, it's 192.168.68.1. And then we can scroll down here a little bit. Uh, I'm actually going to disable IPv6, I don't need it. Um, and, and then down here for DNS servers, uh, I'm actually gonna change this to 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 Google DNS servers. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because on my network, um, on my, my router, I've actually got um, a Pi hole set up already, and I don't want there to be any possible conflicts of uh, this trying to reach out and grab something that Pi hole doesn't think it needs. So I'm just gonna use Google's DNS to make sure that doesn't happen. So once we've got that, um, all of this other stuff, you can basically leave alone if you want to. Go ahead and click save. And uh, then we can start coming down here to this other area. Notifications, um, you can turn notifications on if you want. Uh, I had it on for a while and it never provided me with anything good. Uh, it was just, hey, we rebooted, or hey, you're using a lot of RAM right now, or 
it's probably good if you're not familiar with what's going on, but I, I don't necessarily recommend having notifications on. It's just gonna fill your inbox full of just little insignificant things most of the time. Uh, power management, um, basically here, uh, you can have monitoring turned on or off. Um, probably don't need it turned on, so we'll go ahead and click save there. Uh, scheduled tasks, uh, you can have it do things like shut down, standby, or reboot uh, at specific times if you want to. Um, I'm not gonna do that here, but that's where you would do it. Uh, let's see, let's see, that's power management, so let's look at monitoring. Um, you can probably turn this on. I don't know that it's gonna do anything. Uh, certificates, this is going to be for SSH and SSL. Uh, if you've got an SSH key that you wanna use rather than logging in via SSH and typing in a username and password, you should be able to add an SSH uh, certificate here and do that. Uh, same with SSL. If you're gonna access this on a, on a normal domain, which I don't recommend, uh, you could add uh, an SSL to that to have it secured. Uh, so we'll go ahead and move on from here. Scheduled jobs, uh, not really, uh, well, there's, there's quite a bit that you could do in here. This is kind of gonna run on a cron. Um, so you can set this up for uh, certain hours, minutes, days, uh, whatever. And then you can have it run a command here. Uh, the, again, this is gonna be uh, kind of outside the scope of this video, but just know that you can do scheduled jobs there. Uh, update management, I encourage you to spend some time here at least every couple of days to make sure uh, that all of your updates are are, are installed and, and patched, uh, just to make sure that there are no uh, leaks or compromises or anything available on your system. Plugins, uh, we're actually going to install one right now. We're gonna call, we're gonna look for fail to ban. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and install that. We're not gonna do anything with it right now, uh, but we will want that later. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. We'll give this a minute to do its thing. So if you're not familiar with fail to ban, basically what it does is it monitors your logs, whatever logs you tell it to, and anytime something weird or suspicious or, or just wrong happens, it makes note of that. And after so many times of something wrong happens, uh, typically from an IP, from an outside IP address, it will ban that IP address from trying to connect to your server. Here we're done. We can go and click on close there and uh, click okay. And now's a good time to actually click apply up here and say yes. So we'll give this a minute to do its thing and then we'll continue on. Now this will probably take a couple of minutes. We did do uh, quite a bit of stuff before we told it to uh, save and apply. Uh, so we'll give this a minute to do, but I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up so it doesn't waste any of your time uh, more than I absolutely need to here. Okay, so now that we've gone ahead and done that, the page is reloaded. Uh, we've done our plugins. That was the where we did the fail to, or fail to ban there. Uh, so next thing we want to do is actually come over here uh, to OMV Extras. Uh, this should have automatically installed. And what we want to do is come over here to Docker. And we actually want to uh, find right up here at the top where it says Docker. Click on Install. And we'll give this a minute. This actually usually goes pretty quickly. Uh, but this is, this is how we're going to install Docker. Uh, very straightforward, very easy to do. Uh, so we'll go ahead and give this a second here. Okay, so that's done pretty quickly there. So we'll click close. Uh, then we're gonna come up here to Portainer and we're gonna, going to, ah, we're gonna install that as well. Uh, again, same process, uh, just takes it a minute to do its thing and uh, then we can move on. So as you can see, this is uh, Portainer-CE. Uh, this it means it's Portainer 2. Uh, so we're out of the 1.24 series and now we're actually, we've got Portainer 2 installed here. So there's that. Uh, we do have the option to install a yacht if you wanted to. It's kind of a Portainer alternative, uh, but as you can see here, it's in alpha, and there's still a lot of development that needs to be done before I can fully recommend it on a, as far as it being a day-to-day -day, uh, usage kind of situation here. Uh, there are just certain things you can't do in yacht yet. So I would hold off on installing that unless you just wanna take a look at it. Uh, in fact, I've got a video. If you wanna take a look at that video, I'll, put a, I'll try to remember to put a link to that in the description as well. Um, but I just know that Yacht, I don't recommend Yacht just yet. So uh, let's come over to here. Uh, next thing we've got is disks. Uh, if we come over to here, we can see uh, that I've actually got, uh, I was playing around in here yesterday. I actually wanna take off that. Uh, you can see I've got two disks. I've got one that's 250 gigs. Uh, that is the, uh, the, the, our boot drive. And then I've got a two terabyte or roughly two terabyte drive that we're gonna use for storage. 
So um, next we can go down here to smart. Uh, if your drives support smart, you can turn that on. Uh, this is just an additional level of monitoring on your drives so that you can look and see if, if things are going poorly, uh, see what their status is, that sort of thing. Uh, raid management, we're gonna skip. I don't have any need for raid, so I'm not gonna do anything there. Uh, file systems, um, I've actually already set up my file system. I plugged in my hard drive. I came in and I created a file system and I told it to, to uh, format that drive as ext4 like you can see right here. So uh, flash memory, we're gonna skip. Uh, users and groups, we're going to skip. Uh, I never add more users, you could. In fact, the reality is for, for the sake of security, you probably should have uh, multiple users in here, but uh, I never do uh, because I'm the only one on my network doing the things I'm doing. Uh, my wife wants nothing to do with any of this. She wants to watch MB and everything else she doesn't care about. So uh, I only have one user on here for right now. Uh, shared folders, we are gonna wanna create some shared folders here. I'm gonna go ahead and up here and go and uh, click add. I'm gonna call this config. Uh, and this will come into play later when we're installing Docker containers. We're going to put all of our configuration stuff in this folder. So we're gonna go ahead and create a folder. I'm gonna put it there. Uh, my permissions, I'm gonna set everybody to read and write and I'll click save. And then what I'll do is I'll actually come down here to where it says, basically the, here are the, the services available. We installed fail to ban. I'm not gonna set up FTP, NFS or rsync. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is come down here to SMB CIFS. I'm gonna click on enable. I'll click save and then I'll click shares. I'm going to add a share and then I'm just going to grab this configuration here. Public, I'm gonna say only guests and I'll click save and I'll click apply and I'll say yes. Okay, so now that our uh, shared, or now that we've shared this folder via SMB CIFS, uh, what we should be able to do then is open up uh, our, our uh, file manager here in Windows I do a double backslash and type in our IP address, uh, dot one, two, six. And there is that configuration folder we just uh, created there. We can also do this uh, because we did Hal, uh, or because I did Hal, um, I can also do that. I can do backslash, backslash Hal. Uh, I can also do the same thing. I can do hal.local. Uh, I don't know why you would since Hal works, uh, but those three different addresses will take you to the same place there. And like I said, there's nothing in here for right now. Um, but that's how you would access that folder on the network. And honestly, uh, that, that's basically it here in Open Media Vault. So there's some other stuff I wanna take a look at uh, actually using uh, SSH and going into Raspberry or a Raspi config. So here I am, I have, I have connected via SSH to my server. I've logged in as Pi. Uh, and what I wanna do now is actually type in uh, Ras, or actually what I wanna do, sudo Raspi config like so. Uh, I, I encourage you to change your user password for Pi, uh, leaving it as Raspberry just isn't secure. I definitely encourage you to do that. Uh, network options, uh, there's really nothing in here you need to do. Uh, we've already changed the host name. If you wanted to connect via wireless, you could, um, but there's really nothing in there that you need to do. Uh, same thing for boot options, nothing really in there you need to do. Oops. Uh, localization options, uh, your locale, your time zone. That should already be uh, set. Uh, so like so, uh, what we do wanna do here, uh, in fact, in interfacing options, uh, this is already done. We've already got SSH enabled, uh, so we don't have to do that. What we do wanna do is go not to overclock, but to advanced options. You can't do anything in overclock uh, because it's only available in Pi 1 and Pi 2. Nothing you can do there. Uh, but what, what we do wanna do is go over here to advanced options. Uh, we want to go down here to uh, memory split. Uh, and this is how much memory we're going to allow the GPU to have. Um, and I've got an eight gig uh, a Raspberry Pi 4, but I am, gonna, so I'm going to say 256. You can go higher than that, but I've had issues, uh, black screens and that sort of thing, weird boots. So I don't really like to go much above 256. Um, so basically that's all we need to do in here. But uh, and you'll go ahead and say yes. And we'll give that a minute to reboot. And then when it comes back, we'll go ahead and reconnect. And then we're actually gonna take a look at doing some overclocking in a couple of areas because we've got the power to do it. We've got a good uh, case with plenty of cooling. We may as well bump up our numbers just a little bit to get some more performance. Okay, so here we are back on my desktop after a reboot. So the next thing we wanna do here is actually go ahead and overclock our Raspberry Pi just a little bit. So we're going to do a pseudo nano uh, slash boot slash config.txt. And then we're gonna scroll down a bit to right there. Go ahead and, there we go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead 
and paste in three lines. Uh, the first one is going to overvolt our system just a little bit. As you crank up the, the, the clock speeds, it's gonna need more power. So I found that kind of two in 1750 is a real solid number here. The other thing that we wanna do, <clears throat> Uh, since we've gone ahead and overclocked, or we've given more uh, memory to our GPU, let's go ahead and overclock it uh, a little bit as well. All right, so then what we'll go ahead and do is we'll go ahead and click there. So we'll say GPU underscore frequency is 750. Our CPU frequency is gonna be 1750 or 1.75 gigahertz. And we've got a little over voltage there just to make sure everything happens. So what we'll do, <clears throat> say control O, enter control X, and then a sudo reboot now. So we'll go ahead and give that a minute to reboot. And uh, then our Raspberry Pi will be able to clock up to 1.75 gigahertz. And I uh, will get about 750 megahertz on our GPU. Okay, so we've rebooted, we're overclocked, we're good to go. So there's one more thing that we're gonna do here just real quick. We're gonna run one more command now that we're logged back in. We're actually going to install our first Docker container. Uh, and we're gonna do this through SSH. Uh, so I'm actually gonna have this uh, down in the description down below. So just copy and paste this in and hit enter. Oops, we're gonna have to run that as sudo. I forgot to do that first. Uh, so if you get a, a Docker unknown server OS, uh, probably it's because you gotta run it as sudo. Uh, I, I almost always do this. There we go. So now it says unable to find it. So we'll go ahead and give this a minute to do its thing. It's gonna pull everything down and uh, then deploy. Okay, so now that that's done, what we'll do is we'll pop open uh, a new browser window here. We're gonna type in HTTP colon forward slash forward slash hal dot local. And we're gonna go, go to port 8888, just like so. And here we can see uh, what's going on with our Raspberry Pi. Uh, we can see what version we're on, our uptime, our CPU usage. Uh, this is uh, what it's currently idling at is 600 megahertz. Uh, that's not its full capacity. Again, we bumped that to 1750. Uh, here we can see our idle or our current uh, CPU temperature, memory usage, swap, our, 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 our drives, uh, it, for some reason, it's not showing our uh, external drive. I don't think it was part of this container, um, but it's also got network traffic and Wi-Fi there. So there's our first Docker container installed on our brand new, just recently set up Raspberry Pi Docker home server. One quick thing I almost forgot to mention uh, with this Docker container that we just deployed. Uh, one thing you will wanna do is actually come up here to the top where it says options and click on auto refresh status page. Uh, otherwise it, it, won't, uh, it won't update automatically. I'll have to refresh. Uh, but this will keep us, uh, it'll update every second and give us more accurate information as far as what's going on. Okay guys, so there you go. Now we've covered quite a bit as far as setting up uh, Open Media Vault to make sure that everything kind of works the way we want it to there. Uh, we did some uh, some additional overclocking with our with our Raspberry Pi. We did some additional configuration in Raspi Config. And we even went so far as to install uh, just a, a real simple, simple Docker container to show us the current status of our Raspberry Pi. So hopefully you found the video helpful. Uh, of course, if you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It would help me out a bunch. Of course, everything that I talked about in the in this video will be available in the description down below. Uh, while you're there, there are a couple of links that you could check out if you'd like to. There are different ways to support the channel. One is through coffee, one is through Patreon. And I wanna give a big shout out to my patrons for helping me month after month. Uh, I really do appreciate you guys. So thanks for that. Um, but I think with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.